Well, friends, they're at it again. Democrats calling evil good, and those who are ignorant of God's word are falling for it. What do I mean? Vice President Kamala Harris received a lot of applause when she was speaking last week at the National Baptist Convention in Houston, Texas. Now, it was a confusing speech if you pay attention to her worldview, her actions, and the administration policies. She denounced pro-life, quote, extremists working to outlaw abortion. Now, I have no idea what a divisive, secular, progressive politician who openly opposes the biblical worldview is doing speaking at a Christian convention, but Harris told the crowd that for her and Joe Biden, quote, faith guides our work every day. Hmm, faith in what exactly? I'm David Fiorazzo and this is Christ and Culture. So friends, don't fall for it. Kamala Harris supports more extreme unbiblical policies than any other VP in American history. And that's saying something. Now, sure, she uses Christian lingo, telling the audience, for example, to fight for light over darkness, even though she's the one promoting what the Bible considers deeds of darkness. Now, in simply reading some of her words from the speech, Many of us would agree. You'd read the text on certain things she said and said, oh yeah, amen. But understand, she has proven herself to be hostile toward the Bible-believing Christian and the worldview, and yet she's been trying to portray her and Biden's views on socialism, transgenderism, abortion as Christian views by telling people that, hey, she went to church as a child. Well, so? The media, though, is doing the same thing. People sure must be confused. A host on the failing network, MSNBC, Joe Scarborough, said this last Friday. As a Southern Baptist, wow. I grew up reading the Bible, maybe a backslidden Baptist, but I still know the Bible. Jesus never once talked about abortion, never once, never once mentioned it. And for people perverting the gospel of Jesus Christ down to one issue, it's heresy. So according to theologians in the godless media and in the totalitarian Biden administration, if you and I were to quote scriptures that support human life in mother's wombs, we are perverting the gospel? Hmm. They likely don't know what the gospel of Jesus Christ even is. Now, Jesus said, if we love him, we will keep the commandments. One of those commandments is not to murder. That's right. We are here to value every life because the Bible says every human life is made in God's image. Also, Jesus himself is the word who, may, who became flesh. I'm talking about the word of God, Genesis to Revelation. The New Testament affirms the Old Testament. And the Bible is one cohesive story of redemption by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ for our sins. While it is true that Christ fulfilled the law, he said he did not come to abolish it. The New Testament is clear that believers should obey God's moral law. God spoke through Jeremiah the prophet, saying this, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Jeremiah 1.5. And in Psalm 139, verse 13, the Bible says he formed us in our mother's wombs. Not only that, God knows the number of our days before we are even born. Psalm 139, verse 16. Here's another thing. Joe and Kamala, the Bible calls child sacrifice an abomination. Wow, what's that? Leviticus 18.21 says, You shall not give any of your children to offer them to Molech, nor shall you profane the name of, the, of your God. I am the Lord. Okay, so who's this Molech or Moloch? He was a pagan deity, an idol, who was worshipped in sexual rituals as well as by passing children through the fire. These idols of Moloch were giant metal statues of a man with a bull's head. Some of these had holes in the abdomen, and a fire was lit around it 
or in it, uh, in the statue, and infants were placed in the statue's arms or in the hole, in the stomach. Now, when parents sacrificed their firstborn, which that's what they believed, a Molech would ensure financial prosperity for them, for the family, and for future children. I know, how twisted, right? It's evil. The Bible calls it an abomination. What's the difference between a preborn baby and a firstborn baby? Location, just a few inches. One's inside the birth canal, the other one's outside the womb or the birth canal. Now, other people have said about Kamala Harris' comments, they've refuted the lie that she is peddling to biblically illiterate people, apparently, saying things like, Kamala says, one does not have to abandon their faith or deeply held religious beliefs to defend abortion. Former NFL coach Tony Dungy, in fact, reminded people of God's commandment not to murder and said to respect life. He also added this, when he, God, says thou shalt not kill, is that a suggestion that we should follow if we feel like it, but disregard if we don't like the suggestion? I also agree with Tony Dungy when he said he had a problem with Harris's comments being made in a church environment. One fan of Dungy said, leave your religion out of my government. But it was Kamala Harris, a government official, who brought up the immorality of abortion as part of her fake religion. As for her boss, Joe Biden, he supports abortion medication, even sent through the mail, right? Take a pill, abort your baby. This is called finding new ways to do evil. They also support the removal of all abortion restrictions in all states, as well as they support taxpayer funding the murder of the preborn, which goes against even a majority of American citizens don't agree with Biden and, and Harris according to the polls. Now, I've warned about Kamala Harris before. She's been redefining radical just as leftist progressives and social justice apostates have redefined truth and gender, and the list could go on. Watch out for the deceivers and test the spirits to see if they are in Christ or if they are anti-Christ or anti-Christian. The Bible also instructs true born-again Christians to not believe every spirit and 1 John chapter 4, verse 5 warns about the spirit of error and false teachers, saying this, They are from the world, therefore they speak as from the world, and the world listens to them. In other words, don't you listen to them. And by all means, don't fall for the lies, propaganda, and deception. Marxists, humanists, media sycophants, and leftist politicians are the ones who are the threat to the health and soul of America. God bless you and keep speaking the truth about things that matter.